Hey everybody, welcome to another speed build video. Today I'm working on a building called Mirabide. Mirabida? Ah, I can't. Um, but it is a hostel wine bar building that is it's going to be the last building on Staff Street. Uh, it has the vet surgery inside and it'll also have the hostel and wine bar plus um, a little surprise in the back. Uh, before we get started, I absolutely have to give a huge, huge thanks to everybody who watched last my last video. Uh, it was only my second video and I got so much wonderful feedback and you guys were so, so kind and of course, it's just encouraging to do more. And uh, that brings me to my next topic. It's been a while. Um, yeah, work has gotten super crazy. I It was poorly timed. I decided to start trying to make um, Planet Zoo videos. And then suddenly at work, they were like, yeah, you're working all the time now. So I kind of got trapped in that and haven't had time to uh, record anything. I've been recording what I've been building, but the hardest part is getting time to do this voiceover and yeah, putting it all together and stuff. But um, so that's one reason why it's it's been quite a while since the last video, even though that was not at all planned. Another reason is that I've had so much indecision with this building for some reason, and it's mostly because I didn't want to build the interiors at all. I was completely uninspired, and I, <laughs> I decided for a long while I would leave them plain. I wouldn't do really much of anything, and then, yeah, I found myself in a mood one day and I spent a lot of time on the interiors. Well, one of the interiors, you'll see. Um, so after that, I, after deciding to add some more things, I had to re-record my voiceover and do a bunch more editing and stuff. And so now here we are at uh, Mirabita. The wine bar and hostel. So I built this building to hide the vet surgery and I'm really excited because this is the end of the street and I can start working on the other side of the street soon if I get a little bit of inspiration and figure out what I'm gonna do over there. So if you have any suggestions you let me know. But some of the things I'm considering are making it sort of uh, well, another street where straight across from the staff street will be the back side of all of the buildings on another street, but quite low so that uh, we continue this descending down the mountain. Right now it's really, really flat uh, in this area, which is good and fine, but it needs to change at some point. And I have a couple of ideas, and that's one of them is to make a, a parallel street that that then goes down but we'll see uh, we'll see what what kind of buildings I can put in there um, at this point we're missing a restaurant uh, but I have been working on that and also very importantly our restrooms and perhaps they'll go down there I've been searching for a place to put in restrooms um, in the city and I've, I've come up with not a lot so far. I'll find a spot to get them in there though, but perhaps on that new street. So right now I'm working on a, um, a part of the wine bar where you can open the doors, these double doors uh, out onto the street and people sit inside still, but it's very open and you know, perfect for a really warm climate you can get to enjoy the sun
I'm going with a more detailed facade for this building than I did for the last because, well, it's more true to the area and to the architecture having these um, sort of blocks. Uh, the building next door, the one that we built last video, La Gina Visa, it was also supposed to have these blocks and I opted to not do it out of laziness. So this time I decided to add them and I've added them to other buildings as well. But leaving them out, I shouldn't say, isn't 100% laziness. I did consider it and um, I decided that breaking up the texture on the street from building to building is a little bit more important than keeping everything true to the reference material. So, yeah, I didn't want to have three buildings in a row that had these black facades.
one thing that I learned building this building is how valuable it is to just copy everything, move it over, delete everything you don't want, and then use that uh, as the piece instead of trying to grab a bunch of pieces that are so hard to select because of Planet Zoo's brilliant selecting system. Um, it's still a little bit of work and it looks like a lot of work, but in the end it's so much easier to just copy or select everything in a box, select it all, drag it over, delete what you don't need, and then make a copy of that actually so you don't have to do it again later. That's a valuable lesson I learned while making this building.
The reference building had a greenhouse on the roof and these windows that stuck out. I can't remember what these kinds of windows are. Mm, Morg? No. No, not mortared walls or windows. That doesn't make any sense. I can't remember what these windows are called, but um, they had these and they ended up being a huge pain in the neck. And part of it is because it's they're connecting into this glass house, this glass roof, so it's really hard to hide things, sink things into the wall when you can see exactly everything you've sunk. So it ended up being pretty difficult. Here I'm starting the, the roof of it, and I shouldn't start out being negative, but I hate it. <laughs> it didn't turn out. Uh, nearly as nice as I hoped that it would be or it would and I'm not sure why I may I must have made some mistakes with the geometry and setting it all up um, I definitely didn't do it in the in the best way possible I'm sort of freehanding it because I was feeling a little bit lazy but yeah, it still just, it didn't turn out nice. So maybe there's another solution that I can, I can find out. Cause it's, this just, that's not good enough for me. <laughs> we can do better in my opinion. So I think that's something that I might go back and fix, but this building has been such a long time coming that, I mean, I had it done in quotes I had it done when I released my last video already and I was still working on it last night making changes and stuff so and I did make some changes to these little roofs but they still need work so if you have any ideas what materials would you build this out of I used the the light switch but Maybe bamboo would be better, but I used bamboo in the entrance, one of the buildings in the entrance area, and it didn't look very nice. This doesn't look very nice either, so it's hard to say what the difference would be, but uh, yeah, if you have any ideas at all, please let me know. I tried several different ways of fitting this together in a way that wasn't like one of the issues is those uh, triangle pieces creating um, creating the border make it they end up sticking out of the roof that I've just built so then I have to get working on covering that up so that it doesn't have to be angled so that they don't show and then it just makes it bulkier and thicker than what it's designed to be which isn't quite good enough and <laughs> as you can see I didn't make the uh, roofs wide enough so I have to eyeball these the rest of the curve with these or these rows and it's not right. it's not good enough it's just not good enough I sound like my parents like I'm not mad at the windows I'm just severely disappointed.
the front of this building has the greenhouse and then the back end of it has um, a third story, a little bit higher third story that w ends up working out perfectly for the other side because the other side of the building is raised up. Luckily, the front side facade can be used for the back side without too many alterations because uh, they end up being about the same height. Now this very end of the building, uh, I didn't design a lot. It didn't, it wasn't in the reference because uh, the reference building I used was in the middle of a street. So there were buildings on each side. Um, but I didn't do particularly anything on this side other than continue the block um, material. But that's because I knew already that I wanted to cover this side almost completely with vegetation because as you can see there's this wooden path on the side of the building that leads up to that big brick building and um, that wooden path continues past the entrance to go up to the brick building to create a little seating area and I wanted it all to be pretty intimate and closed off uh, I didn't want the people in that area to be able to see uh, past this plot of land pretty much. I wanted it to be uh, closed off and lush. So I had a garden of sorts planned for this side of the building and uh, nothing else. It didn't need any other decoration so I refrained.
And that's how you sell your soul to the devil to connect a path. I insist on having the Q with paths to enter buildings because it helps with um, the peeps not uh, clipping through the building to get in. They still do a bit here and there, but it helps a lot to narrow the path so that, you know, the edges are, of the building aren't straight in the path. But it turns out to be really difficult sometimes, so I think it's worth it though. Now I'm working on the upper art um, frames for the door and the window on the bottom floor. And I learned a bit from the last uh, circle template that I, I used uh, from when I made the roof on those windows that I hate. So it ends up being made in a slightly more intelligent way, but it's still, <laughs> there's still things to learn. Uh, yeah, but this one worked out a little bit better than the one before. One of the things to learn is how to get it flush on the building. It is crooked and I didn't notice until weeks after this was finished. Or, yeah, finished in quotes, of course. And I still haven't fixed it, so. Also, a um, really good thing to keep in mind, if you want to build any sort of uh, intricate windows or doors or anything like that, like I've made this arch that has a whole bunch of pieces in it, plus some decoration uh, flourishes above the arch and stuff. The best way to do it is to keep it in its own group so that you can easily select both the entire thing and individual pieces when the selecting for the game is being difficult. I will describe it as difficult. Um, it's much easier if everything is in a group for its, in a, uh, in a group by itself uh, so that you don't have to interact and fight with the rest of the building. Because in this case, there are also tons of pieces in the building itself. So there's just an endless amount to click and accidentally click and uh, that kind of thing can really piss you off really easily. So make stuff in a separate group and then when you want to be organized later, uh, just combine them.
So here I've went with a copper uh, roof edging. That's n that doesn't exist in the reference material, but uh, I think it looks quite nice. It looks like something that belongs on the building, even though I don't think they use much copper in Argentina. But uh, it ends up looking at looking nice and it solves the issue that I'm trying to fix and that is seeing the end of the window structure through the glass um, ceiling. Right now I'm putting in blue walls um, in the second story and that's because that's the hostel story. Those are the hostel rooms that people rent and this particular hostel in real life, um, their signature kind of are blue walls, these really, really bright, saturated blue walls. Argentina in general seems to really embrace color, um, so it makes perfect sense to have a really, really bright room uh, for a hostel. So that's what I went with, and then I am working a little bit on the interior of the first floor. The uh, the blue walls upstairs closed off the walls or the room completely, so it's just blue up there, which I think is perfectly fine um, for a second story because unless you have a viewing platform that lets you look into those windows from some place, which we don't really have, um, then just having a hint of something up there is good enough. But you could see that I was working on the wine bar downstairs on the first floor and then I stopped. And that's because I was fighting with myself quite a lot about whether I was even going to fill in the downstairs or not. I, at that point, had not decided on it being a wine bar like in the reference material. It just didn't really seem like something that needed to be there and I didn't, honestly, I didn't feel like doing it, uh, so I didn't. And you can see now that we have gone through a huge jump. I put the back side of the building on. Um, I didn't mean to not record that, I just forgot to hit record <laughs> when I did it and this is where I picked up. Um, also, there are plants on the side of that building. I had done a lot of work on this path separating this building and the brick building to the side. And I built a bunch of old rhododendron bushes, which are a, a great way. I to fill in, It's a great way to fill in this area because I imagine this building being quite old and rhododendron age so so well they're beautiful the older they get and we have these really great um gnarly branches that are naked and ready for you to put something on them so i use those and i can't remember what the the flower is called but it's a deep green uh, leaved flower with three sort of shiny flowers on it um but those ended up working really well for rhododendron. So I filled in that side space with pretty much just rhododendron and grass and some um, little bushes to fill in as well. I didn't record filling any of that in, building any of the garden um, or any of it because that's the kind of thing that I like to do after work, if I have the energy to turn the game on, I like doing foliage and not having to um, stress about it being filmed and being efficient, which I'm not really anyway, but uh, I really don't have to worry about it then. And I don't think that foliage makes for a really great video, so uh, I like to do those things on the side when I don't have any energy to record and think too hard.
So here I've come to terms with the whole thing and I believe that I'm switching the two around to give myself more space for the entrance of this building. At this point, it uh, was not planned at all to have um, guests actually go into this building. It was always meant to be a dummy building basically on this side.
this point I was I guess envisioning a dance studio I'm making these closets and I don't have much of a plan for them other than putting them there <laughs> they're just filling space and making the place look active Maybe I should not have kept this part of the video in because you'll see at the end during the, uh, the show off shots that it didn't stay this way. But all of the pieces still exist in the end, um, the end interior, so you can at least see how I got these up. Here I'm filling in the greenhouse section and uh, I, I could have detailed it a lot more, made it look like a, a living space of some sort and given the plants their pots and things like that. But again, this just needs to function as a, uh, a placeholder for your eye basically, just to give your eye something to look at when you glance by to make it look believable and alive. And here I have decided to work more on the interior of the wine bar. Um, it's not fully fleshed out, but it is a big improvement from nothing and it communicates some sort of end goal.
So we're approaching the end of this build and all we have left is to struggle with these wine racks for the wine bar a little bit longer. I'm using the bottles from the Indian set to uh, represent wine bottles and it is such a bummer that we can't change the colors of those bottles. Uh, I don't love the way it looks in the end. Uh, but that's the best that I have to work with, I think. So that's what I've done.
put in a just a memento uh, into the first floor of the building in the back because the peeps I opened first of all I opened the zoo finally uh, I put a couple of exhibit animals behind the waterfall which we haven't really taken a look at yet but I think the next video we will um, but I wanted people in the in the city so I opened it put animals in and I discovered that the animals were much too far away from the entrance of the zoo and the peeps were getting too tired and their uh, trip duration their visit time uh, was running out before they could get to the animals behind the waterfall so I thought maybe if I put something else for them to visit besides just a coffee shop uh, they would perhaps their their visit time duration would extend after visiting the shop uh, but I found out that that's not the case I, I spent tons of time modifying the bottom there to put in this just a memento and it didn't um, it didn't solve that problem <laughs> but it turns out to be a really really nice bookstore so I'm happy with it it's a ton of pieces so I'm really really glad I didn't go further with a wine bar here um, but I think it's worth it it's really cute and I like going in there and just looking around and stuff so but I hope you enjoy it and I hope you join me next time on our next build which might actually end up being a walkthrough of the city so far uh, because there's a lot that you guys haven't seen yet not a lot a lot it's not a big place but there are things that I've built that have not been featured on a video yet and I'd love to show you guys around so uh, I think that's what we'll do in the next video and then there will be more building after that I've been working on um, a couple of other buildings so those are ripe candidates for a new video Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more speed builds and follow along with this little South American city that I am building. Thanks guys. Bye.